everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Um, we have a good topic today. We are talking about menopausal hormone therapy. We used to call this hormone replacement therapy, but in medicine we evolve, or at least we should if we're good at it. And so we've evolved to now call this menopausal hormone therapy. Specifically in this video, we are going to be talking about estrogen and progesterone. Um, we have talked about testosterone a lot in the past, and I do think that as it when it comes into menopausal hormone therapy, um, testosterone is a really, really, really important piece of that puzzle. Um, but today we are specifically going to be talking about estrogen and progesterone. So why do we want to talk about this? Um, well, we want to talk about it because there is some interesting evidence out there that um, has prevailed for a really long time that is probably inaccurate. Um, and people have these really preconceived notions and these fears about hormone therapy that isn't actually true based on the current body of evidence that we have. So what do I mean by this? Um, so when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about going back to the Women's Health Initiative, which was done in 2002. And what they found was that women had an increased risk for stroke, increased risk for breast cancer, and an increased risk for dementia. And they found that overall, the risks for hormone replacement therapy were too high. Um, and although that study was not actually statistically significant, which is really important when you're in research, not actually statistically significant, we still use that study to this day. Well, what's so interesting is that in that study, they use estrogen and progestins. Now, this is really, really, really important. You'll note that I didn't say progesterone, I said progestins. And what they found and what multiple studies have found since then is that with just estrogen replacement therapy, so if you're a candidate for just estrogen, um, then we usually find that there's a static risk for breast cancer with estrogen replacement therapy, um, or maybe even a slightly decreased risk for breast cancer with estrogen replacement therapy. And you're like, what? That goes against everything I've ever thought of. Yeah, it does. Um, where we found the increased risk for breast cancer was with adding in the progestins. And progestins are not a bioidentical, so it is a synthetic hormone. Um, and it really just wreaks havoc on the body in terms of inflammation. It's completely different than being put on progesterone, right? So I said, if you're a candidate for estrogen only hormone replacement therapy, well, who would be a candidate for that? Well, in theory, women without a uterus are a candidate for that because the reason why we give progesterone is to protect the uterus so that we're not building an endometrial lining and increasing our risk for endometrial cancer. When we're looking at this, right, um, progestins is really what the current evidence is showing is giving us the most risk. And there are multiple studies that are indicating this. Um, and multiple studies also indicate that if we switch women over to progesterone, to a bioidentical progesterone, um, that those risk factors really change. But what's so interesting is there's a current new research study, a 2022 research study that just came out. And the title is Menopausal Hormone Therapy, Why We Should No Longer Be Afraid of Breast Cancer Risk. And in this, they, they basically went back and looked at research since 2002, so since the Women's Health Initiative, and tried to put it into a kind of risk stratification. Um, and what their conclusion was, was that there are a number of reasons why they do not believe that estrogen progestin, go back to what I said before, replacement therapy is actually causing an increased risk for breast cancer. So this is actually going with normal ERPT therapy, which I would not ever, ever, ever recommend to a patient. Um, but even with that, they're finding that the increased incidence of breast cancer is minimal to none. So there's like barely any increased risk for breast cancer. They're finding that patients who are on estrogen replacement therapy at the time of diagnosis actually have better outcomes with their breast cancer. Um, they're finding that breast cancer risk is more related to like lifestyle factors than things like ERPT therapy. Um, and then they actually went on to say that menopausal hormone therapy, by denying women menopausal hormone therapy, we're actually putting them in harm's way because of all the increased benefits that come from that. So let's talk about benefits. If you're on estrogen replacement therapy uh, or estrogen progesterone replacement therapy in menopause, um, what we find is that women have a lower rate of cardiovascular disease, a lower rate of osteoporosis, and a lower rate of um, Alzheimer's and dementia. And that's really important because 
really when it comes down to Alzheimer's and dementia, that's a path that once you're on, it's a treacherous path and it's hard to come back. And estrogen is one of the only things that has been shown to really help with that um, risk factor. And so that's something to consider in patients. You do have a mild increased risk when you're on estrogen for uh, clotting, right? And that is worse with oral therapy. So this is one of the reasons why we do not recommend um, estrogen in menopause in an oral form um, because of the increased risk for clotting. On top of that, when we take estrogen orally, we increase sex hormone binding globulin. Go back to a previous video and you can see what that does to testosterone. Um, but you could be kind of shooting yourself in the foot in terms of the testosterone piece of that as well with estrogen orally. Um, so let's say you're at home and you're like, this is great information and I'm on um, estrogen and progesterone or progestin and I have no idea if I'm doing this right now. I have no idea if this is good and I don't know what to do. It's okay, I'll tell you. So um, when you are looking at your prescriptions, um, what you wanna make sure is that you're not on a medroxyprogesterone acetate or an MPA. And usually that is under the brand name of Provera. Um, that is a hormone that I would definitely say, I would immediately call your doctor and say, hey, can we switch this up to like progesterone? So if you're on progesterone, it will say progesterone or it will say Prometrium. And those would be considered the commercially available by bio, uh, bioidentical progesterones, right? If you're not on a dosage of like 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams, then you may be on a compounded, which also would be bioidentical, so that's great. Um, in terms of estrogens, right? The research on estrogens, it's definitely stronger on progestins that we should be getting rid of, but I would also recommend being on a bioidentical estrogen. So how do you know if you're on that? Well, if you're on a concrete equine estrogen, which is basically like horse estrogen, um, then that would be in the form of Premarin. Um, there are also a number of patches that are also considered synthetic estrogens. So Senestin, Ogen, Fempatch, those are all considered synthetic estrogens as well. Um, and then the combination patches. So any combination patch would have a progestin in it. Some of them actually do have bioidentical estrogen, but progestins, and we definitely don't wanna be on those, so combination patches. Um, but the, at the end of the day, really the takeaway for this is that there are ways to make hormone replacement really safe. Um, and there are ways to make it so that we can lower your risk factors long-term, um, that we can increase women's quality of life and that we can get away from kind of the fear that's been instilled in women over the last 20 years by using just incorrect evidence. Um, so go ahead and put your questions in the comments below. Tell us if this information is surprising to you or if somebody has updated you on any of this information before. Um, and then we'll see you next week for next week's video.